Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. My dear friends, our guest today refers to herself as a practical mystic who does intuitive life coaching, inner child healing, and the reclamation of one's secret self. She says that this process uncovers the hidden strengths, talents, and untapped purpose of the soul. Nicole Froelich was with us for the first time just a couple of months ago, and I was so impressed with what she had to say, and so were many of you, I heard from several people about this, that I invited her to return just as soon as I could find a free place in our schedule. Nicole has more than 25 years of experience in the realm of healing the mind, the body, and soul connections, and she has discovered methods that can help people to rebirth themselves and to emerge as their most authentic self on what she calls the greatest path to their destiny. So, wow, this is this is big. <laughs> Nicole Froelich is the host of Enlighten Up, which is a weekly podcast, and she is the founder of The Forbidden Journey, which is a premium coaching program. She has produced more than 50 guided meditations, and she offers a variety of online courses through her Alchemy Academy. This is a mouthful. Alchemy Academy, which is designed to help people to deepen their intuitive abilities, to heal their inner child, to harmonize masculine and feminine and feminine and feminine energies, which both of us, both kinds of energies all of us have, and to advance personal growth from linear development into quantum leaps that she says are algorithmic, logarithmic rather, in nature. Now, all of this is complex to say, but we are all complex beings when you think about it. And to have someone understand that about you and help you to make these insights happen internally and to help you develop them is big. It's pretty big. And she talked about it the t- last time she was here, and I found it fascinating, and others did too. So let's welcome her again. Nicole, welcome. I'm so happy you're with us again, and so let's dive in. Yeah, thank you so much, Roberta, for having me. It's a pleasure to be back. And now, how do you do this? How do you, when someone comes to you for coaching, how do you help them to really dive into themselves, into their subconscious mind, to reveal and sort of find out what's really going on in there so they can make these insights happen? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, it's really what I love about the way I operate is it's a very unique process for each individual person. Um, And I think when it comes to understanding where we need to go, it's so important first to understand what means the most to someone in their life right now. And we do that by uncovering what you value. And it seems very simple and maybe a little boring and mundane, but if you don't know what means the most to you, then how do we find out the best thing that's going to get that incredible healing and transformation that's going to change your life in all the ways that you are wanting to? And so sometimes what we think we want is not really exactly what we desire deep down. And so it's about first getting to some of the core core um, values. And then from there, like that kind of opens up the gate and it starts to allow me to see which pathway are we going to be going down now? So it's, um, it's kind of like a door opener. And then I know exactly where to lead because some people really value their relationships most. Some people really just want to work on their intuition and psychic abilities. Some people want to know what their purpose is or to deepen their purpose or even just align their purpose with their current career. 
Um, there's a lot of different things. And so it's understanding what is the most meaningful to you right now uh, is, is important. So what kinds of questions do people have when they come to you? What, what kinds of problems would, would people recognize they're having in themselves that would, would say, oh, Nicole is the person I should go to? A lot of people will feel like there's something that um, feels almost like it's invisible in front of them. Like they can't seem to penetrate it. They don't even know exactly what it is that's kind of holding them back or slowing them down or creating this one obstacle after another. After they seemingly feel like they've gotten through one, like another one appears. And it just feels like they're not getting the progression um, that they're looking for in whatever avenue that they're going down. And, and my job is to kind of cut through all of the fluff and all of the stuff. Um, that is in the way and get to the real meat and potatoes of what's going to make a big difference. And so I, because I've been on this healing journey for almost 30 years, like at least my own personal healing journey, but I've also been in the healing space for almost 25 years professionally. I have this, I've, I, I think I've just developed an inner knack of I call it kind of haystack x-ray vision of being able to just kind of look and I'll see exactly what needle we're looking for that's pointing exactly in the direction that you need to go. And that's just one of my, I think one of my gifts that I've been able to home over the years of um, really helping people, you know, not have to go through all of the, st the steps that um, some people may need them to go through or think they have to go through. Like, I don't believe that it's listen, it's not about taking shortcuts, so to speak. It's about knowing what's the most direct path that's going to be the most efficient for you to get you the results that you want. And a lot of times people will make you go through the, um, you know, like the, 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 the generic the generic methods, you know, like, okay, you maybe you just need to start loving yourself more. And then once you love yourself more then this will happen, and then we can work on this. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, and it's not so much that loving yourself isn't important, but there's so many other things that you could be doing, um, or a very valuable thing that you could be doing in conjunction that is going to get you exactly what you want. Um, that's in a sense of transformation in your life, whether it's in your marriage, your relationships, your friendships, your work, your career, whatever it might be. And that's what I think. I, I that's not what I think. That's what I love doing with people. Is it? Different for each person, do you find, or are there common kinds of most are, people have this problem? Well, there are definitely common themes um, because we're all kind of dealing, we all have very um, similar desires. Like we all want to be loved <laughs> and we all yeah. want to love, right? We all want to feel like we have a purpose in life that we're contributing in some way and that we're helping in like adding some sort of legacy to the world in some manner. Um, so there are, are certain um, desires and needs that are universal, but there are also very specific things that are unique to our path that could be in our way that aren't in the way of someone else, you know? And so it's, it's, it's understanding. So one of the things that I've, learned that have helped me and help others is there are a few modalities that I like to look at and I can look at them pretty quickly and, and see, um, it, it doesn't take me weeks and weeks to figure this out. It, I can literally do it in under an hour, um, is like, I'll look at your astrology chart. I'll look at some physical health issues that your body is trying to, because the body is a messenger. I'm sure you agree with that, Roberta, like your body's always communicating to you. It's our biggest messenger system. And so um, I'll look at physical health issues that might be plaguing you. Um, and I'll look at the emotional roots of those physical issues. I'll get an idea of maybe some generational patterns that show up in your family that you are also dealing with. Uh, and I'll also look up at, I'll look at some certain relationship core issues that you'd like to change. And when I look at these things, um, I can pretty quickly, uh, and I also will look at someone's inner child. Like I'll just ask like, you know, what is the one thing that your inner child wants the most right now? 
And um, not everyone's going to be able to answer that, but that's okay. Uh, it, it'll, it will come out. But when I kind of focus on those things, I get a pretty clear picture of what's going on and what's going to get you that break, not even just a breakthrough. I mean, like it's going to completely transform your life. And so there are other things that I've done that have worked, but they're kind of unnecessary. So why do them? Well, there's a point. That's that's true. A lot of things. If something's unnecessary, why do it? Yeah, yeah. Do you find that a lot of things have to do with childhood issues for people? Well, yeah, a lot of things will stem back to your childhood. Um, you know, like there's it's it's we're all programmed beings, and a lot of that programming sets in in the first seven years of our life. So it's it, it's important to kind of look at that. And it's not that you have to always go back to the past to change the future because there are ways of getting around that. But I believe that that little boy or girl inside of us is a very valuable guide. And so it's important that you know who that little one is inside of you because to this day, I still check in with her and I, I'll know if I'm like, Ooh, I'm avoiding that certain part of me that is, there's a need there. And I, that's important to me to, even as an adult, to still have that need met. And, uh, you know, or there's like a really, um, important characteristic or trait that she has that I know is important in my relationship connections. And if I don't like let her come out in my relationships, then, um, it doesn't give me that depth and connectivity that I'm looking for. So, it's important to know all the parts of us, including that little one inside of us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go into all of the the darkest, darkest, darkest parts of you to get the healing that you need. Um, it's important to be able to be willing to face it, but it doesn't mean that you're going to have to uncover every dark memory or secret or all that to get. You don't have to relive it. You, no. you don't have to. Yeah. No. That's important to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fascinating. What about past lives? Do you find there are things rooted in some past lives sometimes? Oh, yeah. So, you know, the thing is, is that I find past lives come in handy just for the sense of giving you context of why something might be happening. But, mm, it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily need to know it in order to move forward. Uh, I think it just kind of gives the ego something to wrap its head around and be like, oh, okay, so that's why this is happening. But what I like to do is I like to look at your astrology chart and I can see based off of certain placements in your natal chart of things that you've, as a soul, that you've already been really good at in your past lives and that in this lifetime, you've learned to do the opposite so that you become better on the polar opposite of that so that you're becoming more well-rounded as a soul. And so, oh, yeah, yeah, so it kind of shows me where you have these natural um um affinities to like your comfort zones and why you gravitate towards this and and why you're struggling so much with this, but then understanding, oh, wow, well, if I look at your chart, I can tell you that, yeah, you struggle with this, but you're supposed to because you don't know it so well yet, but you're meant to find all your solutions to your problems in this area. So you got to keep going there, even though it's uncomfortable. And the reason why the other place is comfortable is because you've done it so many times in your past life. You've, you're, you're so used to that. And so in this lifetime, you've decided as a soul, okay, it's time to go to the other side and start growing and evolving there. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. And, and, and how do people react to this guidance? Do they try it in their, in their present life then? And how does that work? The one of the things that I often hear over and over from people who've worked with me and I've shown them this blueprint, um, like I kind of call it like your destiny's blueprint. Um, it's also like a healing br- blueprint as well. Um, is that a lot of people will tell me a lot of times they're crying through it just because they feel like they feel seen for the first time and they understand why things are the way they are. I think one of the, 
things that hold a lot of people back is this sense of like, why is this happening to me? And they can often fall into a bit of a victim mentality of like, this is so hard. Why is it so easy for this person? And I have to struggle and I have to do this. And when I show them, well, actually you designed this in your blueprint because you wanted to learn and grow from this. And this is important. And this is why your dad did this. And this is why you actually put it into your blueprint so that you could grow and evolve. And it's like, once someone actually sees, oh, there's a, there's a bigger plan. Like I actually designed this into it that it almost, it feels like it almost sets them free in a way. And it's, it all, it allows them to get out of that well of victim mentality that so many, even myself, I've fallen into that, you know, and, and it, yeah. and it can easily happen when it feels like you're constantly coming up against a wall or you're always in, as soon as you complete one obstacle, another challenge presents itself, you know, and right. um, just kind of really understanding that more. Yes. Wow. So that must really make a lot of difference for, for many people that, that suddenly, Things seem clearer that had not seemed to be part of any kind of pattern before. That must really make a difference. Yeah, no, it, it really does. And so, like, for instance, for me, um, in my birth chart, I can see that I have um, a planet that is showing that in a lot of lifetimes, I've been very more, much more domesticated in my life. I've spent a lot of time being more homely and um, more reclusive, like less out and being social, being seen so much. I was like stuck to my home roots and, and all of that family life was very important to me. And in this lifetime, um, my soul wants to evolve on the opposite. It wants to be seen through business, through career ambitions to per perhaps be in the spotlight, um, to be, uh, have a certain level of, and when I say this word, um, I, when I say fame, I just mean to be recognized more. Uh, and yeah. that is something that has been very uncomfortable for me um, throughout my whole life. Like I've, I, I remember growing up, one of my best girl, like girlfriends, she was like, I want to be famous. I want to be on TV. And I'm just like, why would you want to be famous? I don't want <laughs> anyone to know who I am. I love my anonymity. You know, like I don't have to worry about people like interrupting me if I'm having dinner with someone or, you know, like I just, and she would get recognized on the streets and we'd always have to stop and take pictures with people that recognized her and stuff. And, and I just remember like, I don't like that. And when I started to realize, well, my soul was so used to like, like in past lives, being more of that reclusive, just to, like being at home, like, you know, kind of small town vibes, don't need the world to know who I am. In this lifetime, I have to allow myself to be seen. I have to allow myself to kind of be above the radar as, above, as, as instead of flying below the radar. And that's been very challenging for me. And I set it up even with certain traumas in my life that would push me to be like, no, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be seen. And <laughs> so it's all these things that would challenge me to grow and, and get above that. And now that I'm finally allowing myself to pursue my career ambitions and to do that in a way that does put me in front of more people than previously I would have liked to. It's showing me that I can help a lot more people and that allows yeah. people to find me and, and yeah. allows me to actually fulfill more of my mission and my duties. So, um, that is, that is something that I can see very much in my chart, just as like an example. Yeah, no, I, I think that that, that's, very insightful. I think that does does really help you to fulfill a purpose that you could not have fulfilled if you were not not better known. That's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but it also explains to me like why do I just want to be at home? Like why do I just you know? And so I did all the yeah, it helps yeah. me make sense of things, you know, which is just kind of nice for the ego. The e because here's the thing, the ego is constantly trying to keep us safe, right? The ego yeah. wants you to just stay the same. Very, very self-protective. That's Yes. Right. But once my ego realized, oh, so this is the way it is, but this is where I'm supposed to go. And okay, we, we, we know this is uncomfortable, but okay, our growth and our, our ambitions, our goals, all of that starts to get achieved if we do that. Okay, I can understand that. Oh, uh, that makes sense. And so it kind of set 
me free from the ego wanting to keep me safe and unseen. Um, so, so that was a big deal for me. Yeah, that's, that's actually great. That's mm-hmm. wonderful. So do more men or more women sort of want what, what it is you can help them with? I would say um, I'm, um, it's more women for sure. <laughs> But I, I have about, I'd say it's a 70, 30 split of, um, men and women in my programs and in my coaching and, and all of that. So, uh, and I do see a lot more men, uh, starting to become more of a participant in their own, um, desire for having whatever transformation they're wanting in their life, you know, whatever, yes. wanting better relationships, wanting to feel more purposeful, wanting to um, have deeper connections, whatever it might be. Maybe it's more a better health, wh- whatever it may be. I'm seeing men actually take the steering wheel on that more now. I think that's happening in the world in general. Um, I'm hearing from many more men in, in now in, in my in my work as well that I was say 20 years ago, mm-hmm. um, they men used to feel, I think that they had to be stoic. You know, I can handle no matter what happens, I can handle it. But now um, men are, are looking for are more men are much more open emotionally and, and are looking for more help and understanding than ever before. I hear from many more men now than I ever did before. Just getting yeah, I, th- I think that's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I think it is too. It's so much healthier for them because um, I think there was a time when rad- they would rather kill themselves than admit that they had a problem. And that's not very healthy at all. Um, no, and I, and I think we're at a we're at a point where men are really under a big crisis in our world right now. And they need that. Um, they need to know that they're that they're just as important as the women in this society uh, and that there are people in this world who do care for them and want them to succeed and want them oh, to be well. So. And Yes. Mm-hmm. No, I, I hear from a lot of men now who are not afraid to or ashamed to um, ask questions and um, and seek help with 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 things that they're not sure about. I mean, in in my case, what they're asking about mostly is things that Jesus said or, um, or, you know, spiritual questions, but it's really quite, it's, I love it. Frankly, I I love the fact that they're willing to ask questions, which they never were before. Yeah. And so, so um, where are you going with your practice? Because obviously it's still, you know, you're still learning from what you do and you're still evolving in what you teach. And I hope I always do. <laughs> yes, that's what we both feel, I think. That's what that's what both of us are still learning and growing in what we do. I think uh, if, if not, that would be very unhealthy. So where are you going with it? Yeah, well, I mean, now I'm I'm starting to work a little bit more with people um, in person. So retreats have been something that uh, over the last year I've added to my offering, which has brought through probably some of the biggest transformations and incredible healing miracles. And uh, that is just exciting to be witness to. And nothing gives me more joy than being witness to someone's journey and, and, and letting them see the power that is held within them of what they're capable of actually yeah. um, doing with their, with their body, their mind, their hearts, you know, and, and then what that, what that means for their life and their relationships uh, on the other side of that. And so uh, I love doing that. And so that's been interesting. I, I'm kind of really shifted more into longer term coaching. Uh, I'm in the midst of uh, recreating uh, some programs. I mean, I have online courses and things like that, but I want to start work. One of the things that I noticed this year is I had a, um, I had a generational trauma program that I was running with um, a group and I recognized how powerful the group healing was instead of like one-on-one. And I saw that there were components to group healing that one-on-one healing can't provide. And it's 
really special to see how others in the container who are just showing up for their own healing are actually helping others heal. Isn't and, that wonderful? When yeah. yeah. And so I think yeah. one, it's just beautiful to see, but two, it's important for people to see their value in how they are making meaningful differences in other people's life, just by being them, just by sharing, by being vulnerable and helping other people not feel alone and realizing, oh, you're going through it too. And there's things that other people have offered in the container that I, as the coach or the facilitator, couldn't have offered. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the same way if I say it. And so bringing that in, I'm starting, I'm just getting ready to launch a new kind of mastermind group healing program um, that I'm hoping to get launched before the end of this month, um, August, that I think could be extremely powerful in getting people like that really all life altering transformation that, um, that is sometimes feel like it's so far from your grasp, but really it's not. You just need a few key tweaks here and there. And, and a lot of people don't even realize that a lot of the work that they've already done, like it's, it's, it's kind of prime them for just all you need is a few little tweaks now. And it's those little tweaks that can actually make the big difference. The point you make about how other people's insights can be very useful is very, very helpful. Um, I, it surprises me too. One of the things that I have done um, is recently to give two courses in the use of uh, the teachings of Jesus to grow spiritually, to help, help people grow spiritually. And I thought I was giving them to small groups to, to use those teachings individually. Basically, I didn't think I was giving them in ways that they could help one another to use their teachings to grow spiritually. But I see what you mean, because that's what they were doing. They were using them not just to get the insights themselves, but also to help one another to, to use those, those teachings to grow spiritually. And I, frankly, I could have done one-on-one -on -one coaching, but it wouldn't have been as helpful. Because my insights, no matter how much I've studied the teachings, were not, they were individually helpful, but they were not as helpful as the group was because, because everybody was hearing Jesus a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. and I got those insights a little bit differently and shared them a little bit differently. And it was very, very helpful to the group. I loved it. I just loved it. Yeah. And also, I feel like what that, that's kind of also, I think part of the path back to community that is so important that we've lost touch with is yes. in the age of the internet and, and cell phones and all of that, we've, we've become more connected than ever. And at the same time, more disconnected um, more than ever. Yes. And I think being the, these kinds of pathways for group healing and coaching, although they're not the pathway for everyone, I think a lot of people benefit from them, not just in hearing insights from other people, but also rebuilding the trust of like-minded individuals coming together, sharing, and what it means to have community again. I think we've maybe minimized the value of community because we're so used to just being kind of on our own and being very disconnected. But I think that this like kind of way of actually healing together is one of the ways we bridge yes. that gap. Yes. And analogous to that is the fact that people are growing past churches, all the empty churches. Well, all those empty churches were full of clergymen who had never really read the teachings of Jesus, because I don't, you probably are not aware of the fact that they never read the teachings of Jesus in those really? churches. Really? Yes. What they did was they taught what the, the Roman Emperor Constantine had taught. He didn't teach the Gospels. And now people are actually reading what Jesus taught. And that was a whole lot different. And that, frankly, is what people are beginning to read now. 
Mm. So that's what I that's what I teach. And um, it's wonderful to see people discover for the first time what Jesus actually taught, which is very different and much more wonderful and full of love. So that's that's been what I've been helping people discover. And it's been quite wonderful, quite no fear, just love. That's how it should be. That's right. There's quite a bit of fear in what Christianity. That's teaches. what drove me away from religion was because yes. of the, the use of you fear. and, uh, you know, several billion other people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, but that's, as you say, for people to discover these new and wonderful things and help other people to discover them too, together. That's new community, Mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful community. That's the community of the 21st century, and it's going to be quite, quite beautiful. So let's, you know, let's all come together in that new, wonderful way and help one another to do that too. And that's really what you're doing, you know, in your groups, and, and that's what I'm doing in mine. I think it's just beautiful. And we can use the new technology of the 21st century to do it much more easily and much more efficiently. Mm-hmm. Quite, yes. quite yes. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's, you know, one of the things that um, I love to share in, in helping people understand, like, you know, sometimes we can do all of these healing methods and still feel like we've made zero progress or very minimal progress in a sense of seeing the results in our actual real life showing up, right? Like, right. We like well, I've done years and years and I keep doing this and people say, just keep doing it and this is going to happen. Like <laughs> one of the things that was such a big game changer for me was um, I kept, no matter how much I was loving myself, you know, like I take myself on dates. I buy myself flowers. I do all the things. As long as you buy yourself candy too, you've got to do both. (laughs) Right. I would do all the things that I was like, okay, I'm loving. I'm showing up for myself. I'm prioritizing. I'm doing all the things. Right. And yet I still kept attracting a partner who would, be emotionally or physically, sometimes both of unavailable to me. Right. Right. And I'm like, I don't understand it. Like I'm physically showing up for myself. I'm emotionally showing up for myself. So why isn't the guy showing up for me? And it dawned on me that all of a sudden it just, I was brought to this memory I had with my dad um, who was, you know, he was uh, the sole breadwinner of our family. My mom was a stay at home mom. And so he would have to work really long days and, um, would be gone early in the morning and would come home late at night. But every time, um, he would come home, we would all hear the garage door start to open and from the electronic gar- garage door opener. And one of us would, who heard it first would scream, dad's home. And it would be a mad dash to the mudroom door to see who got there first to like give dad a hug and tell him that, you know, we loved him. And just the smile on his face of like, you know, how he would be bombarded with his kids just coming home. And I realized that I lived for those brief, very brief, but powerful moments of I've got his love right now, you know, like he's right. here and I would feast on that. And then there'd be nothing for oh. like the rest, like, you know, because he'd be gone. He'd be gone. He'd come mm. home, he'd have dinner with my mom and then he'd go in front of the TV to have his like re unwinding time. And within less than an hour, he'd be asleep on the sofa. Right. Oh God. <laughs> and so there was very little time. And so what I realized was, Oh, my definition of love is you only get it in those little short bursts, right? And so I was naturally attracted to guys and choosing guys who would do, even though that's not what I consciously wanted. No. Like I consciously no. wanted someone who was going to be there all the time, supportive, right. you know, Um, but 
it's like, oh, well, if that's what's familiar to me and that's what I always known to be love, I have to be willing to experience love in a different way. And so I made a very, very subtle shift because it didn't require much, but I was like, okay, whatever that feeling of like love and chemistry and butterflies is that I feel with someone where I'm like, Ooh, this is the one I'm like, that's telling me I've found a partner who's likely not going to be emotionally available to me. (laughs) Who's going to be physically like not showing up. So I'm like, I've got to, I've got to rewire my, my mind and my body for what love really is for me. And so that meant going out on dates with guys who at first I was like, I don't know. I'm not, I can mean it's, they're nice and, and they're handsome and the conversation's good. And I was like, but I don't feel like that instant connection of like, Ooh, this is home. And so, but I, as soon as I realized what home meant for me, I was like, well, that's not the home we want. So no, <laughs> yeah. So I started, I remember I, I was like, I went on a date with a guy and I instantly sat down and I thought, Oh, nope. I already know not going to be a connection. But after the, I was like, but after like the date ended, I was like, you know, he's cute. That was great conversation. He wants to see me again. I'll, I'll, you know what? Just go out on one more date and, oh and see. God. And I go out on another date and it's better than the first one. And now there's a little romantic connection starting to form. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, he wants to go out on a third date. I'm like, all right, I'll go on a third, third date. All of a sudden there's sparks. And I'm like, well, where was this on the first date? You know? And I'm like, Ooh, like I didn't know that this, and he would, he was showing up for me. He would, he wanted to emotionally, he was there. And I was like, wow. And it just made me realize that I had to change my definition of what love felt like to me, knowing that it was going to be unfamiliar because it was very different from what I received as a child. And that one little thing is what shifted the game. And all of a sudden I started having much better dating experiences. I started detracting um, the men, like, you sure you still get a few who are like going to be just like the, the, the past, but you can spot it really quickly. And you're like, no, we're not doing this. And, um, and, and it's like little things like that, so, but it's like, I could have thought, oh, I'm just, how much more do I need to love myself? You know, <laughs> but isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, that's actually something I'm going to, I'm creating a course on like a really simple course. Yeah, that's a people. powerful course to teach on how to like a understand people have had themselves. that kind of experience in childhood with a very unavailable father. Mm-hmm. Wow. Who loved me. He he told me good man, wonderful man, as good of a father Great as he provider. could be. Yeah. Yep. But, um, that translated into me constantly looking without me realizing it was very unconscious and subconscious. Yeah. And I realized, oh, story that is. Yeah. And I'm like, I got to stop living for the high of, um, like that little moment, that breadcrumb. And I'm like, I don't want just the loaf. I don't even want the loaf anymore. I want the whole bakery. Like give me the bakery. (laughs) Right. That's what you deserve too. Yeah. So it's like little things like that that can be the big game changers. Oh, sure. Oh, wow. Completely. Mm-hmm. And and that pe- passed to the next generation if women have not, men too, have not understood how dysfunctional their childhood was when, where love is concerned. That could be why there are so few healthy marriages in that next generation because they have never learned how proper marriages uh, need to be in order for love to last. Yeah, no. And it's like, oh. it, it was like, you know, I had a one guy who um, couldn't understand why he kept attracting like the crazy woman, um, you know, the the one who brought in all the drama, the one who was constantly crying yeah, yeah. And, yeah, right. and, and all that. And I said, well, oh, it's right. Yeah. And I said, it's pretty simple. And I just kind of pointed out a couple things about his relationship with his mother and what he watched. And, and and he's like, Oh my gosh, he goes, I thought I was wanting the opposite of my, I'm like, yeah, but your attraction 
is to that because it's so familiar to you, right? Yeah. So you actually equate, that's what you equate love with because that's all oh, you knew. Goodness. So you could yeah. make a whole practice out of just helping <laughs> those people. I know it's, it's, it's kind of something I'm realizing I need to kind of maybe gear things more towards. So that I'm working on so that. Huge. But, mm-hmm. so, but think of you, you could change the world just with that practice. I mean, it's just, it's so simple too. It's not difficult to figure that out, right? No, no, that's huge. Yeah. And so that's what I like to do. I like to look for the simple things that are like, they're so obvious and they're so simple, but yet they're so overlooked. You know, like, it's like, no, you don't have to go to the big trauma here and the big this there. Like we can actually start looking at some stuff that's not so deep because that's not super deep. Right. But, oh, my gosh, game changer in my relationship dynamics with that. No, that's powerful. That is so powerful. Yeah. And 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 it's so basic to what makes for happy childhoods for the next generation, too. Let's Mm -hmm. think about that. Yeah. All those children who deserve a happy childhood. All the children who want to be born that maybe don't get to be born because their parents never make it that far. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we're, we are, we've come to the end of our time. <laughs> we always just, do it so fast. <laughs> yes. The time goes so quickly. What do you want to tell people? What do you want them to take away from today? I, th- I believe that our healing journey is so paramount to us enjoying life, but you shouldn't be spending your entire time healing because then you never get to really enjoy your life. And so there there are, there are ways to, to actually start implementing the healing or doing the healing that actually allows you to live your life now, as opposed to months, years down the road. It doesn't have to be so long. It doesn't have to be so dragged out. It doesn't have to be so difficult or complex. Um, it can be much more simplified. And that doesn't mean that you don't look at some of the tougher stuff, but it doesn't mean that you get lost in it, absorbed in it. And, you know, like there, there's ways of, of making enough big shifts so that you feel good about yourself. You can already start to enjoy some of the other stuff so that you can tackle some of the darker stuff, but still be enjoying the fruits of your, your labor, you know, already. Yes. Right. And, and, and that's important. I, one of the things that I I'm offering right now, it's called my healing game changer. And I'll, and I'll send you the link, um, uh, Roberta for your audience if they're interested. And it's just like a, I just do a 30 minute assessment. Um, and I'll tell you exactly what I would do if I were you to get that major, like game changing move in your healing journey right now. And a lot of times it's so simple. It's so simple. It's so easy to do, you know, and um, and that's what I want people to realize is that it doesn't have to be so hard and complex all the time. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, my dear. I always enjoy talking to you. We're going to do this again soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Oh, um, I, I think that the way I would sum up our conversation, frankly, is to say that whenever I talk with you, I always have the sense that what you're really telling us is you don't have to spend your whole life trying to make your life perfect before you start living it. You can you can just make some adjustments and make your life a whole lot better right quickly and then live a much better life right now, which... I think so many people don't really understand. There, there. A lot of people think they've got to get counseling upon counseling, and and you, you really seem to want to help people to make their life so much better right now. And I think that's really your message. And I so I, I really appreciate that because a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how to do that. And bless you, my dear. I so appreciate. I really appreciate talking with you. Oh, thank you for having me. And to, well, thank you so much for being here. And everyone, I'm so sorry, but we've come to the end of our time. And um, Nicole Froelich's actually website is very easy, and, and she's going to send me that special link too, and that will be with these materials. But her website is just nicolefroelich.com. Very easy. 
And once again, my beloved friends, we've come to the end of our time. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you get that, when you get all the implications of that fact, frankly, it changes everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guest will be our great friend, Craig Hogan, who will be with us for the 46th time in Seek Reality's 11-year history, amazingly enough. I think he was even our very first guest, and now he still joins us faithfully four times every year. Craig Hogan, Craig Hogan is the world's leading expert on what really happens at and after death, and all that I can tell you is that it's, it's all good news. Craig and I eventually founded SeekReality.com, and that's where we put together all the best evidence that exists on Earth about death and the afterlife. And then periodically, whenever Craig joins us, we talk about some facet of all the wonderful and amazing evidence that we've gathered. So please join us next week. I think you're going you're gonna to really be sorry if you miss this. It's always fun whenever he's here. And this week, we've been talking with Nicole Froelich, who's been here for just the second time, but not the last. Nicole refers to herself as a practical mystic who does intuitive life coaching, inner child healing, and the reclamation of one's secret self. I think that's kind of complicated. What she really does is kind of intuitively figure out what's going wrong and help you quickly kind of do a tune-up while you're living your life so that you can live a better life. I think that's really what she does. And she doesn't look old enough for this to be true, but she says that she's she spent 25 years of experience in the realm of healing the mind, the body, and the soul connections. And she's discovered methods that can help people to rebirth themselves and emerge as their most authentic self on the greatest path to their destiny, which I think is pretty neat. But she does it while, sort of while you're still living your life. Many, many counselors will kind of get your, get their hooks into you and they'll keep counseling you but they never kind of stop it. One of the people that I love is Peter Wright, who can, in just a couple of sessions, really tune you up. People tell me, who have been to him, that, that he's been able to fix their problems pretty quickly. Another person who seems able to do that pretty well is Nicole. So those are the people you want to go through. They don't kind of spend their lives trying to tune you up. They do it pretty quickly. And that's what you want, because... You want to live your life while you're living your life. You don't want to kind of try to spend your life trying to fix it. Life is what's, who was it who said this? John Lennon said, life is what's happening while you're making other plans. You want to live your life. And that's what's going on now. So live your life while you're living your life. And of course, also, Teachings by Jesus is your best resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the greatest teacher of them all, Master Jesus. He did not start Christianity. Christianity is the religion that was created 300 years after Jesus was ascended, and it was created by the Roman Emperor Constantine and not by Jesus. Now that his religion, Constantine's religion, is dying, Jesus can finally teach us the truth. So go to teachingsbyjesus.com and finally learn from the greatest teacher of them all. As you know, I have some books, but they're all we are already out of time. Just go to Amazon and you can find my books. Or just contact me through robertagrimes.com. There's a green contact block there. And we'll talk about whatever you'd like to talk with me about. Just always, always... Give me your correct address, because sometimes I'll write a long email and it bounces, and that makes me sad. And meanwhile, there are more than 550 past episodes of Seek Reality available wherever audio podcasts can be found. And there also are some video episodes each week on Roku or Fire Stick, YouTube, and so on. And meanwhile... This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one reality, always knowing, never forgetting that you are a powerful, eternal being, and most of all, in all of this entire universe, in all of reality, you 
are infinitely, eternally, and perfectly loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything. 